All right, first, just get the... Hi, everybody. Praise the Lord. Well, it's getting close to Turkey Day here, and I wanted to catch up a little bit on a couple of videos here. Um, one of my worship things, uh, if you look it up, Joshua Aaron, J-O-S-H-U-A, Aaron, A-A-R-O-N, and then Aaron Schutz, S-H-U-S-T. Uh, I wrote, they both have albums out and stuff, and I got the DVDs and I listened to them in the train shop usually. And so, uh, but I was just listening to them because it's like, it's just the Israeli worship and the types of musical instruments are so different from ours. And uh, I just seem to, it just really blesses me to do that or listen to it and stuff for my worship time or my, just to give me a calmness and a peace and stuff. Um, I got a couple of definitions here I was going to throw at you and see uh, paradox. Uh, I've watched several videos from several different big companies that talk about Pauline Paradox. But I never really stopped and looked what Paradox meant. So I went to about six different sources. You know, when you Google it, then you come up with all these sites. And I wrote down and I tried to, to guesstimate it or figure it out and stuff. And Wikipedia and different things. But it means a situation or statement that seems impossible or is so or is difficult to understand because it contains two oppo opposite facts or characteristics a situation or statement that seems impossible or is difficult to understand because it does contain it it contains two opposite facts or characteristics and again tonight, I had a guy reply to one of my things. He says, oh, you don't trust the New Testament. And it's like, okay, here we go, starting all over again. And it's like, I am trusting what the different characters or the authors, I tr if once I trust the authors, I can trust what they're saying. And see, a lot of people are committed to the authors and not so much to what they're saying, if they're a qualified author. They're afraid to test the scriptures. And tonight I, I have, I want to talk to Yeshua or ask him, I want to talk about a, just a, an apostle. Apostle, the definition, again, I looked through six or eight of them. One who sent off a messenger, an ambassador, and someone to deliver a specific message. One who set off messenger and a bat ambassador to deliver a specific message. So what's the difference between that and a, a disciple? A disciple is a follower or adherent to a teaching. Imitated both the life and the teachings of the master. It's a deliberate apprenticeship, a deliberate apprenticeship. So is a follower or adherent to the teacher, imitated both the life and the teachings of the master. And so for me, I want to be a disciple of Yeshua. I want to follow and walk in his ways. I don't want to be a teacher. I'm not here. I do not say to people, that this is the truthful church, or this is the church, or I have the way, or, or the right way. I'm sharing with you the things that I've learned, okay? And I've often thought of that in a Bible study, me being a strong personality, it's hard to let others who are less steadiers share what they're sharing and not dominate you know and so we have I have to purpose in a Bible study to back off or sometimes I like to say I facilitate it and so to where people can uh, can share and stuff but if you want to if I want to find out uh, this here again this teaching here probably took several months uh, to find this out this is one of my proofs for uh, something else but Jesus Christ you're going to see 
chose apostles out of the disciples. And a lot of times when I'm telling you too, or talking, when I'm reading through scripture, you got to see whose disciple they're talking about. Disciple is a general word used. Paul had his own disciples. Different people have their own disciples, the followers of their teachings. And so, and the question is, can we still have apostles today? And so based on this study, we're going to find out what the answer could be. So get your pencils and papers out. John 6, chapter 6, verse 70. And Yeshua answered them, I Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? Can you imagine being in that group? And you're like, okay, is that me or is that, what does he define as a devil? John 15, 27. And you also will bear witness because you have been with me from the beginning. He's talking to the apostles in the context. Luke 6, 13. And when day came, he, Yeshua, called his disciples and chose 12 of them whom he also named apostles. See, so this is where, even though I have the word Bible defined as my title, we also have to look at the purpose that Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, wanted to use those men. He had a purpose, and that's why he changed them and designated them differently. Okay, yeah, John 21, 24. This is the disciple who is bearing witness about these things. You have to remember, see, even there, John was saying this is a disciple. James and Jude did not call themselves apostles. Matter of fact, Jude didn't even say he was a brother of Yeshua. He said he's a brother of James in his letters. Matthew 19, 28. Yeshua said to them, Truly I tell you, at the renewal of all things, when the Son of Man is seated, sits on his glorious throne, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. See, when I understand what Yeshua, my Lord Jesus, says, I can better understand the other letters in the New Testament, if they're accurate or if they're true or if they're false or not. Because I know historically that the canon was altered many times and that the writings have been altered too. Acts 121, so one of the men who have accompanied us during all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us. That's Peter. And Acts 2.14, but Peter standing up with the eleven announced, or lifted up his voice and said, he's standing up with eleven. So he's making it clear that there's only 12. Because that's what he was taught. See, this is where we're not taught accurately what our Messiah says. We are taught what the church teaches us. Acts 1, 23-24 And they appointed to Joseph, called Barabbas, Barassus, who was surnamed Justice, and Mathis. And they prayed and said, Lord, thou Lord, which knows the hearts of all men, show us whether the two of those these we should choose. And these guys were already baptized, I think. No, they're not with the Holy Ghost. It hadn't happened yet. But uh, they walked with Yeshua. They knew what his requirements were. And he, they, Peter made the choice. People have laughed at me or laughed at it. Well, he, he drew straws or drew whatever. That was a common practice. And I did a teaching on that too, that a Father in Heaven authorizes and okays that. Acts 1, verse 26, until the day when Jesus was taken up, after he had given commandments through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. Yeshua is very clear, 12 apostles, he had two backup men. Acts 2, Acts 6, verses 2, Acts, verse, <laughs> Acts 6, verse 2, and the 12 summoned the full number of disciples and said and the twelve summoned the full number of disciples see there's a very clear ranking here and purpose here Acts 8 verse 1b they were all scattered through the region of Judea and Samaria except the apostles this is back when Paul was persecuting the church people automatically think 
that when that they're talking about the disciples as the intermixed disciple and apostle as two different two different groups. Acts ten thirty nine. Peter said, "We are witnesses of all that he did, etc." Jude seventeen b. But you must remember, beloved, the predictions of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus never said, "Go and make apostles." He said, "Go and make disciples." That's very clear. Well, Marty, what if we was no, no? There's no what if stuff. Are we going to believe what our Messiah says, or are we not? John 1, verses 1 and 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning. I love this one. What we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed. We have seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. Can, John makes it very clear. I don't know how you can not accept what he's saying there. Revelations 1, uh, 1b and 2. We made it known by sending, he made it known by sending to his servant John, who bore witness to the word of God and to the testimony of Jesus Christ, even to all that he saw. He bore witness to it. You have to remember after uh, John left Patmos after the prison and stuff, and after he might have been one of the last few people to uh, be the first generation to know Christ. Matthew 13, 11. And Yeshua said to you have been given the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Okay, see, this is where if someone else in the Bible tells you that they received the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, that's not what our Lord Jesus said. He said he gave it to the apostles, the secrets, if you read the context. Acts 10, 41, not to all the people, but to us who have been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. How can we be an apostle if we did not eat and drink and see him after he rose from the dead? Revelations 21, 14, last one. And the wall of the city has 12 foundations, and on them are the 12 names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Praise the Lord. So Yeshua, our Lord Jesus, had a purpose for distinguishing what an apostle was and what a disciple was. An apostle is very clear that they are testifying to what they had. They were a messenger or an ambassador to deliver a specific message. They are to deliver a specific message. One who's sent off. See, they're, they're also disciples because they're following and adhering to a teacher. But to deliver a specific message message. No one else can be an apostle because they did not see, witness, eat, and taste and have and see him afterwards. And that's what I'm just sharing with you. So think about that because this, this is important. The more we retrain our minds to what the Lord Yeshua has taught us and wants to teach us and what the Father's teaching us as we sort the scriptures out and stuff. Um I, I was blinded by the word, the inerrant word of God, inspired word of God in the New Testament. Once the Father showed me through people or through his word that I need to test the characters and the people on who to believe and who to follow, then everything became clear became very important. He wants, our Heavenly Father wants us to distinguish between good and evil. Signs and wonders does not verify anything. The Satan can do all that stuff too. People can do that in Yeshua's name. The Father gave us the Old Testament and we need to follow the Torah to the different laws that may apply to us. Just like circumcision, a simple thing that I've 
I've been working on that, but circumcision, if I want, I'm circumcised anyway, but, but uh, if I wanted to participate in Passover, or if I wanted to go into the temple, I have to be circumcised. That was part of the sojourner and the Jews. But there's a lot of things that are given to the sojourner as an option, if you want to do this, if you partake with us, if you do this. But he makes it clear to the sojourner, if you keep my Sabbaths, and you honor my commandments, then you will be with me in Mount Zion. I don't remember what verse that is, but it's a pretty cool verse. So, the Old Testament has come alive, folks. And this whole teaching here in this new channel is for you to give it to people and encourage them and say, hey, read, look up all these verses. See what the Lord Jesus said. Because his words are... <laughs> I was telling somebody today at work, we was working, and I said that uh, Jesus said, follow my words. And they said, beware of the Pharisees. Why do we not believe that that could mean here and now? He was talking to somebody. The Pharisees were there at the time. So maybe he is current day, real time, see? But we always look back and say, that's back then. Father Yahweh, I'm so grateful for you in this time. Uh, thank you for setting me free to be willing to study the Bible and be willing to be wrong. I've been wrong so many times that I look forward to more and more teachings from you and studying from you. Uh, I pray that uh, you'll have mercy on us, that you'll have mercy on our country, and that others, that all of us who are out there believing and knowing and seeing the truth, will turn and continue to tell and warn other people that you'll raise up a remnant to your glory who loves your law, who loves your ordinances, who loves everything there is about you and we want to live it out. I want to be holy or set apart. I want to walk separately from the ways of this world in my real time here and now. In Yeshua's name, amen.